frequently when people first run across the dilution factors, they think that it's some sort of a voodoo and they have a hard time understanding exactly what's going on with it and an even harder time remembering exactly the layout for it. Especially since in different spots in our text, you know, in different spots in the titration curve, it's going to have different formats. But let's just take a look at one of our most cherished equations in all of chemistry, one of the most misused equations in all of chemistry, and see exactly what that's telling us about this equation. M1V1 equals M2V2. Now we remember the one time that we can get away with using this is when we're doing a dilution. People constantly try to use it for other things, but they shouldn't, because this doesn't actually encounter any reaction stoichiometry. This is only for saying if I have a certain amount of stuff in solution, and then I change the volume, what concentration of stuff will I have at the end? Well, let's go ahead and get that to be more explicit for this case. Let's suppose that we're talking about a titration. And let's say that we're starting out by talking about our current concentration of solution. So molarity of solution and the volume of our current solution equals molarity of our analyte, the thing that we had originally, and the volume of our analyte. Now, notice what we're saying here is we started with some concentration at a certain volume. We've added a bunch of titrant to that, and we're not worrying about exactly what concentration we're in. We're going to handle whether it's in one form or another later on. We could even start to consider this to be a formal concentration. We're not going to worry about exactly what's going on with that quite yet. We're going to focus more on the volume side of things. Now, notice that when we go ahead and we rearrange this, what we can say is that we can take our molarity and multiply it times the volume of our analyte. Now let's bring our volume of our solution over because what we really want to know is the current volume, our uh, current uh, concentration of our solution. That's what we're going to be working with. So we're going to go ahead and divide this whole side by the volume of our solution. Well, what's currently in our solution? Well, it's going to be the amount of original analyte and the amount that we've added to that since. Now we're just going to treat this as being a factor that we multiply the uh, molarity of our analyte, and that tells us the current molarity of our solution. In other words, molarity of our solution equals the molarity of our original analyte times In other words, what have we done as far as diluting it? That's all that we're talking about when we specify that this is our dilution factor. So really, it's just a restatement of what we've got in our M1V1 equals M2V2. I personally think that you're better off staying with M1V1 equals M2V2 and thinking through the process of what do I actually have present in my solution? Because if you just flat out memorize the shortened form that you see here on the slide and that you'll find in your textbook, you're going to have to memorize two different forms, whether we're in our early on spot in our titration curve or a different form when we're later in the titration curve. Rather than deal with it like that, I'd say let's just keep our brains on and actually think of it and approach it as a dilution problem.